On a future day, as the sun gradually weakened and the earth plunged into darkness, humanity embarks on the Sun Reboot Project. They launched the massive spacecraft Icarus-1, carrying a nuclear weapon to reignite the sun. However, the ship lost contact with Earth before reaching its destination. Seven years later, a team of eight experts from various fields piloted the Icarus 1i on the same mission. After a 16-month journey, they were about to enter a solar storm, which would sever their communication with Earth. The crew members begin recording videos, bidding their final farewells to their families. Canada, sensing the crew's increasing depression, had an idea to uplift their spirits. He gathered everyone in the observation room, where they witness an irregular sphere, slowly orbiting around the sun, the first time humans had seen the planet with their naked eyes. At that moment, Harvey made an even more astonishing discovery. He received a distress signal from the Icarus 1, merely 15,000 kilometers away from them, close to the bomb deployment point. The crew becomes divided on whether to attempt a rescue. After conducting a simulated experiment led by Kappa, in charge of the bomb, they conclude that recovering the nuclear bomb from Icarus 1, would significantly increase the mission's success rate. Captain Kaneda ultimately decided to change course and rescue the Icarus 1. In the middle of the night, the crew was abruptly awakened by an alarm, rushing to the control center. During the process of changing the course, the navigator, Trey, forgot to adjust the angle of the heat shield, causing four panels to jam and become immovable. Captain Kaneda and Kappa volunteered to venture outside the ship in their bulky spacesuits to fix the issue. They quickly managed to close the first jammed panel, but the ship's tilt angle exposed the oxygen-providing botanical garden to the direct sunlight. Resulting in a fire and explosion, the spacecraft sustained severe damage, triggering an automated emergency procedure that began turning it back towards its original course. To ensure Kappa's safety, Kaneda instructs him to leave, sacrificing himself to close the final heat shield. Trey, who witnessed everything, fell deep into self-blame, to prevent him from taking drastic measures. The doctor administers a sedative to him. The destruction of the botanical gardens, which provided oxygen, has occurred. Their oxygen will soon be depleted. They found themselves in a dilemma. However, they finally discovered the Icarus 1 spacecraft. The two ships successfully docked. The four-person team opened the airlock of the Icarus 1. They found dust everywhere. Possibly human skin debris in the sealed environment. They split up and explored. Finding a highly developed ecosystem. With abundant oxygen and water. Enough to complete their mission, Mace powered up the Icarus 1's main control system and found everything to be normal. However, the eerie video left by the captain of the Icarus 1, Pinbacker, sent chills down their spines. Pinbacker believed that humans should accept their natural demise. So he willingly abandoned the mission. Fortunately, Kappa delivered some good news. The nuclear bomb on the Icarus 1 was intact and functional. Unfortunately, Mace delivered bad news as well. The ship's mainboard had been deliberately sabotaged, rendering them unable to activate the nuclear bomb system. On the other side, Searle discovered the crew of the Icarus 1, who had collectively committed suicide in the observation room. Suddenly, the connection between the two ships was forcefully severed, and the spacecraft's airtight passage was damaged. Opening the airlock would mean certain death for the four of them, faced with a single spacesuit. Mace selflessly gave it to Kappa, as only he could perfectly hit the target with the nuclear bomb. Mace prepared to use the space airflow during the door opening to send them back to the Icarus 2 spacecraft. However, someone had to stay behind to manually open the airlock of the Icarus 1. Searle volunteered to stay. He helped Kappa put on the spacesuit, while the others wrapped themselves in insulation materials. With everything ready, as soon as the airlock opened, the pressure propelled the three of them towards the Icarus 2 spacecraft. However, Harvey was flung into space and froze into an ice sculpture within just 10 seconds, later incinerated by a solar storm. Mace, with Kappa's assistance, successfully entered the Icarus 2 spacecraft. Other than frostbite on his hands, he was unharmed. Meanwhile, Searle, who remained on the Icarus 1, entered the observation room and gradually vanished into the sun's rays after the separation from the Icarus 2. The remaining four individuals sat together, attributing all the doubts to the mentally collapsed navigator, Trey. Mace took out a knife, intending to deal with him. But when he arrived at the medical bay, Trey had already taken his own life. The four of them then divided their tasks and prepared for the upcoming bomb deployment mission. Kappa initiated a self-diagnostic of the spacecraft, only to discover that there was an extra person on board, and that person was in the observation room. 
Kappa hurriedly rushed to the scene and amidst the blinding sunlight, he saw a severely burned individual who kept uttering desires for humanity's destruction. Kappa immediately realized that it was Captain Pinbacker of the Icarus One, and he was responsible for sabotaging the ship's connection channel earlier. Suddenly, Pinbacker attacked him, Kappa managed to evade the assault, retreating into an airlock and sealing the door, escaping Pinbacker's pursuit. However, Pinbacker locked the door from the outside, trapping Kappa inside. Pinbacker then removed the mainboard from the spacecraft's cooling tank, causing the ship to cease functioning. Subsequently, in the botanical garden, he killed the botanist, Corazon. Mace, sensing something was wrong, discovered Kappa trapped in the main control room. They established communication and learned about Pinbacker's plan. Mace courageously entered the cooling tank, manually restoring the mainboard to its original position. Soon, the power system was reactivated, but the main control system had been damaged due to prolonged exposure to high temperatures, rendering the spacecraft unable to start. Frostbitten Mace informed Kappa that their only option was to separate the bomb chamber and manually detonate it once it entered the sun. Kappa decided to make a desperate gamble. He jettisoned the outer door of the spacecraft, and the immense pressure instantaneously propelled the airlock chamber door away. Struggling, Kappa made his way back to the control room, separating the nuclear warhead from the spacecraft. As he witnessed the successful separation of the bomb chamber, Kappa leaped and grabbed onto the door of the bomb chamber. With the ignition of the nuclear bomb chamber, the Icarus II spacecraft turned into a brilliant spark within the solar storm. Kappa entered the nuclear bomb chamber. He observed the fingerprints on the equipment. Clearly, Pinbacker and the missing Cassie were present. With Cassie's protection, Kappa finally obtained the detonation switch. As the bomb chamber reached its critical point, Kappa successfully triggered the explosion. Accompanied by dazzling sparks, Kappa embraced the intense fire. Merging with the birth of the new sun, the nuclear fission caused a fusion reaction, reigniting the sun, the Earth. Frozen for hundreds of years, once again basked in the warmth of sunlight, perhaps without external interference, the only thing that could make humanity surrender was humanity itself.